All right, pardon me. So um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. One, stereotypical conceptions of the continent, as well as uh, reality. So the stereotypes fall into two categories primarily, as you can see on the screen, pornography and warnography. I think those are self-explanatory. And what we have to understand when we're trying to use education in order to expand minds is why people uh, like double standards. Once we can understand that, it makes it easier not to accept false information to begin with and to be better at looking for correct information. Well, double standards appeal to people because they allow them to get a pass at somebody else's expense. So we find images often of ourselves or our team that we find appealing and we don't necessarily know why, but we just do. We like those images and that means that us living in a European uh, settler state find images all over the place that affirm the idea of uh, European mastery in every field of human endeavor. So when I was a high school teacher many years ago, um, the IB classroom in, in our school was full of images just like this that uh, proclaimed uh, European uh, outstanding achievement. And that's fine. That's great. That's the way it should be. It just shouldn't be limited to Europe, especially at a school like ours where half of the IB students or more were South and East Asian and there were no images whatsoever to represent them and certainly absolutely none to represent any of 50, Africa's 55 countries. So these are standard images. Now the contrast of course that we get for the African continent and all African civilizations stretching back thousands of years to the foundation of, of uh, human uh, cities and writing and technology and so forth. This is the kind of stuff that we get and it's limited to this. It's not to say that these images are not real, but of course uh, it's also true that uh, there are images like this that are absolutely true of Europe, uh, contemporary Europe, all of these images that you're seeing right now. And uh, that doesn't include the many images of war and uh, other types of oppression and misery that are in Europe. And if those were the only images that you ever saw of yourself on the news or of uh, yourself in textbooks and in school and so forth, not only would you have a misleading image of yourself that would limit your sense of the possible, but so would everybody around you have misleading images of you and have a limited sense of what you can do. Hollywood, of course, being one of the most powerful media forces on the planet, uh, takes a leading role in this kind of miseducation. I just want to make a brief note here about how these images work uh, because by uh, looking into images of women we can understand the idea that this is not exclusively about um, race or racism, it is actually about the relationship between the powerful and those whose power has been taken away. So these are very common images of how women are depicted in, in Hollywood movies. Uh, they are literally lower than the man unless they're evil seductresses. They are prizes. Their weakness is necessary for the hero to, in, to assert himself as a hero. In other words, she is absolutely necessary for him so that he can be a hero. But if she starts to be a hero herself, he's less necessary. And that will lead us to some of the discussion that we'll have around the idea of aid uh, as it is commonly thought of in the West. So again, more of these types of images showing women as, as prizes, as objects, as waiting to be sources of pleasure or of as rewards for the man's uh, heroism. Uh, this is what we get uh, in Hollywood's depiction of everything having to do with either Africa or other uh, civilizations or sets of civilizations, uh, including the poster on the right relating to uh, a story in East Asia. But these are the images. Um, there will be a European hero and there will be uh, Africans who are shadowed or perhaps villains, but very often they're just not even on the poster at all. They're irrelevant. Even in their own 55 countries, they don't matter. When you take those over, those same images over to the United States, again, you have a European heroine and much smaller or in the background uh, colored kids who, uh, who exist to prove that she's a hero. So without Without them being small, she could not be tall. Uh, sometimes the contrast uh, is, uh, it seems to be reversed, but uh, when you look at who has uh, power and, and intelligence glittering in the eye with the halo effect and so forth, who is the one who's leading the other, who's strong enough to move a 300-pound 
football player with only her tender, loving hand, uh, we understand the power relationship. We often see phrases such as "Save Africa," um, whose uh, you know phrase like that is, uh, I guess you'd have to call that hubris. Um, who on earth would think that they could save one billion people in 55 countries unless they conceived of themselves as a superhuman? And there's 2,000 or more languages. The per capita income averaged across the continent is larger than India's or China's, and a tremendous, uh, not only magnificent ancient histories, but outstanding contemporary achievement in every field. But um, we will get through the discourse of, of aid, the idea that a group of, for instance, junior high kids can raise a little bit of money and they're going to save one billion people. Well, again, that's hubris. Uh, that kind of hubris is reflected in the work of a, uh, not just hubris, but actual contempt, because the line between pity and contempt is very small indeed. Uh, of an organization in Edmonton uh, that was called Students Against Global Apathy. Here's the look. Here's their Africa Needs More Love shirt. There you can see this is the kind of attitude that I've come across in one form or another uh, many, many times over the years. And when confronted about this, uh, they very angrily uh, refused to, to concede that the shirt was disrespectful in the extreme. We wouldn't have shirts like this with similar energy uh, uh, images, for instance. Similar images seen from a distance uh, that show the African continent being stomped into the ground uh, with an ironic message that is difficult to see from a distance. Okay, so these are the double uh, these are the uh, the, the uh, double standards of images, as I as I say. And so uh, one takeaway immediately is some um, in any of your work, uh, educationally or in development, uh, never use Africa as a synonym for backwardness. Uh, so now